CataractCoach.com. The FACO tip punctures the capsule. How do you avoid this complication? And now, how do you recover from this and finish the surgery? We have an anonymous surgeon who's operating. So there's our cataract, nice white cataract, good rexus. Tripan blue dye staining. I like that capsule rexus. Let's see the technique. Nice FACO chop. And another chop. With a lens like this, it's quite dense. It may need a few extra chops in there. Someone that's kind of fibrous and it's hard to remove uh, pieces without doing extra sub chops. So rotating it, really trying to separate the pieces. Good technique, pretty good. And removing that nuclear piece, that looks great. And removing another nuclear piece. And then chopping, chopping. ASL looks pretty good, where's the issue, right? Well, what's coming, just watch carefully. Now, we'll slow down the video here in just a moment. And I wanna show you at the end here when we're removing the last bit of cataract. Now, look how empty the capsule bag is. It's a white cataract, correct? So there is no cortex, no epinuclear shell, nothing to weigh down the capsule bag. So that flimsy bag is bouncing all around. And look at the position of that chopper tip. It's not in that safe position. The chopper tip is pointing right at the optic nerve. You want the rounded back end to be there instead. And that, it's done. Watch again. Take that piece down. And the chopper is not protecting the, ca the pa capsule bag at all. And it goes, oh, you nailed the bag. Now what? Don't panic. Keep the probe in the eye. Take the chopper out. And fill up the capsule or bag. Or fill, pressurize the eye with viscoelastic. Now here's the mistake though. The foot pedal has to slowly go to position zero. Because otherwise if you keep putting that infusion in, look, all these strings of spaghetti just fly right out. And now you came out of the eye and you let vitreous prolapse. So make another para, and you're gonna have to do an anterior vitrectomy now. So I'll go in that hole. Now lucky the FACO tip made a nice round, simple hole that you can have some strength with. It's pretty reasonable. So doing a bimanual anterior vitrectomy. There's no cortex, so this mode we're on is anterior vitrectomy. Position one on the pedals infusion, two is the cutter, the vitreous cutter, and three is aspiration. You wanna have a very high cut rate. So whatever your machine will do, 1,000, 2,000, even more cuts per minute. And taking your time here, and if you can tell where the prolapse vitreous is, that's great. If not, put in the triamcinolone to stain the vitreous. So going inside the capsule or bag here, right inside that rent, that, pu that puncture site, and making sure we get all of that prolapse vitreous out. And luckily it's a small break and doesn't look too bad. And that looks okay, I suppose. Let's fill the bag now with our, our viscoelastic, actually opening up the sulcus, so putting a little bit of a cohesive viscoelastic under the iris. Here comes the lens. Now... Whoa, 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 wrong direction, buddy. Remember the 7L rule, that first haptic better look like a number seven. That is not a number seven, that's better. But ooh, the trauma of getting this thing flipped over now. You have to know how to deliver this three-piece lens. There's so many good videos that explain this. Please watch it. Now it's in the correct anti-S position. But did the bag open up more? Did that straight leading haptic, when it went around and was in the wrong way, did it puncture the capsule bag even more? Is the bag further ripped? It kind of looks like it. I don't think we can just call this quits right now. I think we have more vitreous prolapse. That lens doesn't look too, uh, too stable to me. Let's put in the triamcinolone. That's a generous amount of triamcinolone. Then now let's, uh, let's put in the bimanual instruments again, the anterior vitrector. First, we can put some BSS in. There you go, let's swirl it around. Oh yeah, look, there's extra vitreous right there. You can see it. And now you gotta remove that. You can't leave that one haptic entangled with vitreous there. Remember, post-op, this patient's at a higher risk for retinal attachment because of vitreous traction. Higher risk of cystoid macular edema, higher risk of endophthalmitis. So this is, this is not gonna be sufficient. So putting in the suture, fine. Let's close up that main incision. That's actually a smart move here. You're not gonna use the main incision anymore. You're just gonna use the two side port paracentesis incisions in order to do the bimanual anterior vitrectomy. Now, I think you can still do it with this lens in position. So going back in here now, you really have to clean up that prolapsed vitreous and do not leave this eye with vitreous in the anterior segment. Take your time. 
Really make it pretty. So again, that's not that's not sufficient. So we're gonna have to do a little more work here. Hands being switched. There we go. Now we need to get over to that area of the prolapse vitreous. Let's clean that up. Still not super happy with that lens position. Let's sweep around more. Make sure there's no more prolapse vitreous. Again. Every time we come out of the eye and let that AC depressurize and that lens optic comes forwards, you have a risk of vitreous coming forwards. Now that's looking a lot better in terms of the lens position. And now I think myocall was instilled at some point because the pupil's coming down. Let's get that suture tied up again. So I'll put that suture in. In a case like this, oh, just put the suture, please. You don't need yet another issue. Similarly, this patient, right, we had that puncture in the capsule, but we ended up extending it because the lens went in um, in the wrong direction. So we had to fix that too. So now it's looking a lot better. Um, it's pretty good. I still I don't like that I see the edge of that optic over there on the right side, but it's pretty reasonable. And here at the end, pupil comes down and get that lens centered. All right, we'll take it. So, ooh, tough case. Cleaning out the AC, if the pupil comes down like this, you're pretty sure there's no vitreous strands there because otherwise it would peak the pupil. Seal this thing up, give this patient some uh, intracameral antibiotics and watch them very closely in the post-op period. So it could happen to you. Be careful. Use the chopper in the safe position. Thanks for watching. And check out cataractcoach.com for the full teaching website, all organized by categories and indexed with a great search engine too.